kneels down, running around in front of this crazy crowd, landing in front of Jesus, grabbing onto his hands and saying, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good question. Now, if you're going to ask a question, that one's a pretty good one. What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus. What do I got to do? Yeah, I, I'm okay with mystery. Some people are, are, are not okay with mystery. I'm okay with mystery. I'm okay with there's things that I don't understand. I'm okay with that. It makes life more exciting. But there's some things that to find peace, I, I think you really got to answer. And, and this is one. What do I, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? What's, what's forever mean for me, guy? Profound question. Compelled to ask it. And Jesus, verse 18, answers. Why do you call me good? Jesus said. Only God is truly good. <laughs> I love Jesus. Because he's playing with them. <laughs> he's messing with his head. Just a little bit. Not meanly, but a little bit. He's not even on the, on the question. Good teacher. How do I inherit it with your life? Why do you call me good? Uh, only God's good. I mean, okay, so from a spiritual standpoint, what he's doing is bringing him around to a realization that Jesus was Christ. <laughs> okay, I give you that, all you deeply spiritual ones. He was messing with him. He's just playing with him, just a little bit, drawing him in, but let's play a little bit of a mind game with him. And he moves on to answer the question. But, to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, you must not cheat anyone, honor your father and mother. Now, if you remember our series on the Ten Promises, these all come from the last six <laughs> commandments, which deal with how we deal with each other. <laughs> They're the easy ones. I don't kill. Yep, I have not killed. I'm good on that one. Jack Middleton, yep, good on that one. Have a yeah, I'm good on that one. The easy ones. And it's funny to me because the same syndrome that, that attacked this rich young ruler back in the day is the same thing that infects us as Christians today. We keep the letter of the law while completely missing the whole spirit of the law. Keeping the, the basics of the law while missing what it's really, really all about. Because this is the really easy stuff. Notice that Jesus didn't say, well, you need to worship me, you need to acknowledge me, you need to, you need to, whatever. He, he, he raises the risk factor in some interesting ways. Because he, he focuses the attention on the last six, not the first four. And if you remember from our series, the first four are the key to the last six. If you don't have the first four, you can't keep the last six, especially the first. You have no other gods before me. That's the key to all the other ten commandments. You remember the series? But Jesus doesn't touch that because he's drawn the man into a dialogue to show him what's really going on in his life. And he goes through this list that are the easiest to fake, yet the hardest to keep. Which is why I think that Christians sometimes today are in the same position perhaps as rich young ruler was. I keep this, I keep this, I keep this. It's why Christians can be some of the biggest jerks. They're not there. Um... <laughs> I didn't ask my wife if I could tell the story, so I'm hoping I'm going to be okay when I go home today. <laughs> um, my wife uh, works at KTSY, fixing radio station, the morning show this week, Chris has been gone. Her co host, Chris has been gone on vacation. She got two hate letters, strongly unhappy letters, perhaps would be a better way to put it. And you know why? Good Christian people, you know why they were upset? Because she read the news too happy. Because she read the news too happy. And one was upset because she read about Obama's tax plan to, to uh, raise taxes on those who make over 250000 and lower taxes on, on the middle class. And, and, and this was going to, doesn't she know that this would affect KTSY's income because the rich people that give money to KTSY wouldn't be able to give as much because of the tax higher. And she shouldn't be being political about this and blah, blah, blah. The other person thought she was reading the news too happy and said, in essence, would you be reading the news that happy standing at the gates of Auschwitz? What? This is said, tell me what's in a rush. It's interesting to 
me that Christians can be so daggum mean. Now, obviously, I'm partial to my wife. You don't like the way that, that my wife reads the news. You know what? <laughs> Go listen to Russ. <laughs> and don't tell me about it. But you know what? I listen to NPR a lot. And, um, and, and it's kind of refreshing to have someone read the news with a little bit of um, happiness and, and, and life to it. And I love NPR. I listen to it a lot. But they kind of focus on the, the straight talking news. Yeah. <laughs> You know you're weird. Snoring through NPR? Yeah. <laughs> and so maybe I'm biased because it's my wife, but really standing at the gates of Auschwitz? Really? And we're people that carry the name of Christ? You see, sometimes... You see, we... It's easy to say, well, I've, I've not killed, but I'm a regular pain in the posterior. I haven't lied, but I've talked about how messed up the people are around me. I haven't committed adultery, but don't look at my history on the internet. And it's really easy for us to say with the rich young ruler, verse 20, teach the man of I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. I'm good. I've done it all. I've done them all. And this is where Jesus is, has reeled man in, showing the real problem, the crucial test. Look at the man, verse 21. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Here's this man. And from this story, is perhaps a bit of a pompous pain. Has a pretty high opinion of himself. Is a bit judgmental. Is brash enough, and we give him points for this, for being compelled by his question to follow the faith of Jesus and say, Good teacher, what is it that I have to do to inherit eternal life? Because inside of him there was this burning question that he wanted to have answered. And and maybe he wasn't sure he wanted the answer, but he had to ask anyway. And look at this messed up guy who was reaching out. Jesus looked down and loved him. 